Hi all, welcome to my channel, welcome to my world, this is The World of Wayne. Today I'm going to be doing pack 8 of the Agora Models release of Build the Corvette Stingray. Now if you remember in the last pack I became a carpenter and we did the internal floor pan and we carpeted the whole thing. Well we're going to be doing a lot more carpeting today just for this section at the back. We're also going to be putting the central tunnel in with the gear stick I believe and we're also going to be putting the seats in as well. Now if you want to get this for yourself I have put a link in the video description here and there is also a QR code on the screen. You can scan and get this all the way from pack one. I do believe there might be an accelerator on this now where you can get the first few packs uh, all in one go now. But uh, check out the Agora Models website and you'll be able to see that for yourself. But without further ado, let's get cracking. So today's video starts with stage 60, which I have here. There's actually 12 stages in this pack, so there's quite a lot to go through. Let's get these out. So the first thing we're going to do is take these rubber mats, and these really are <laughs> rubber mats. I think that's brilliant. Okay, we're going to be putting some stickers over these sides here. So as you can see there, we do have the Corvette logo on. So they're the sides that need to stay up. And it's just a case of putting these onto here. And pretty similar to what we've been doing carpentry-wise in the last pack. I'll take half the sticker off and fold half of the sticker down. Get this into position where it's going to go. Make sure that fits nicely in there. And then pull off the rest of the sticker. And there we go. We've got one of the mats completed. Do the same on the other one. Just like that. Perfectly into place. We have two mats. And that is all there is to do in that stage. So in stage 61, a nice long pack this one, we are going to start the central console panel. Let's get everything out. And the first thing we're going to need is actually the gear stick with the knob that goes on the end. And on this pointed end here, it's just a case of pushing this onto that. Now I'm just going to see what sort of fit it's got. Is it a tight fit? Definitely going to need my magnifying glasses for this. <laughs> I don't know, I think I am going to just put some glue on the end here. Just to be sure. But when that's on, it should look just like that. Now I'm going to be taking this gator, which looks like that. And I just need to push this ball joint section through the bottom of this. It's like a rubber gator. So as you can see, it comes out the bottom like that. And then bringing over this trim panel for the center console, I'm going to turn this upside down. And this is going to be going this way around. So the gear sticks poking through the correct side like that. You can see that just there. Very good. All we have to do then is bring over what we were working on last time. I'm going to be putting this into place into this back section just here. So now that is perfectly in place. We need to hold that in though. That's going to be held in with some JP screws. So we have two at the back. I think I'll use my PH1 screwdriver for this. And one just at the front here. There we go, that's in place. Now this is the accelerator pedal here. Now this is gonna be going into the hole that we can see just down that side there. This is a left-hand drive. <laughs> We're gonna be putting this notch just under the trim here. Let's get that in. And then I'm gonna need an AP screw just to secure this to the underside. So you can see we've got a little hole there. And when that's in, that should look like that. Excellent. Now we've got this pillar, which is going onto this center console at the back. We do have a locating lug in here, which is gonna go into that hole just there. This is why we have some FP screws this time. Just turn it over and we need two FP screws just down this center console here. And that is all there is to do in that stage. Thank you. 
in stage 62. As you can see here, we're going to be starting the first seat. This looks like the uh, cushion foam that we're going to be putting in. And this is probably the simplest stage of any build you've done. We're just going to take the cushion foam, push this in here, make sure these tabs are on top of this section here. Now this is quite a springy material anyway, so the foam's gonna help that, but that's all there is to do in that stage. Moving swiftly on to stage 63, we have got the bases for that section now, I believe. So I'm gonna be taking this plastic, very hard plastic seat base, and this is gonna go in here, making sure the tabs go on top. So don't be afraid to bend it around to ensure that all of these tabs are going to be in place and that the posts here are going to go through these holes there so that's one side done do the other side it's going to take a little bit of bending but as you can see posts are through on that side and the tabs are showing on this side i want to hold this in with pp screws these are flange screws didn't get that last one in there so it's in now four of these PP screws to hold this into place. And that is perfect there. So once we've done that, we can take this base here. I want it round this way with these tabs facing up and that's just gonna be going on top like that. Once again, I'm holding this in with FP screws and I'm gonna need four of these. And with that in place, that's all there is to do in that stage. In stage 64, we're going to be starting the backrest. And you can see, mirroring what we've just done, that we're in for an easy stage again. Take your time on this. You want to get your phone. You want to put this under here like this. I'm sorry, I can't help having a laugh. But there you go. <laughs> That's all there is to do in that stage. So moving swiftly on to 65, you can pretty much see what we're going to do. We're going to mirror what we did on the bottom cushion here. So once again, I want to take this hard plastic panel looking like this, bring over what we just did in the last stage. And again, I'm going to be massaging this to get all these tabs on top of this plastic section like this. Perfect, and then once again, we've got the PP screws to put this in place. As you can see, four of these going in. But just to mix things up a bit and make things slightly different, on this bit, we have got some uh, lugs, which are just gonna go into the holes here. So this, when we put this base in, is just gonna be a push in like that. So we've created the back of the seat. In stage 66, we're going to be starting the other seat, so you can have a guess of what I'm doing. Now, what I'm going to do is put all of these stages for the next seat together. Otherwise, you'll be watching loads of stage indents, and uh, it's going to get quite boring. So this is stage 66, putting it together. Um, I am laughing and chuckling to myself because someone did send me a message before this actually started to say, you're going to really struggle with these stages. And uh, I didn't realise they were being sarcastic. <laughs> but there you go. So that was stage 66. Let's bring up stage 67. Because I'm sure you're getting tired of that stage transition indent. <laughs> Just like last time, we're going to be taking the seat base, pushing this through the hole on this side, and then again, manipulating all... I used the word massaging last time. I like the word massaging. Massaging all <laughs> these tabs. You do have to really have a good little pull around to get this in, but they are all in place. Okay, PP screws again. PP. <laughs> oh, I'm such a child. Okay. <laughs> Number two. Number two. <laughs> Come on, Wayne. Be serious. So here you go. Here's the last one just going in here. And then just like last time, again, we're taking this hard section this way up, going in here. FP screws. We need four of these to get this into place. Again, this is the last one going in here. So there's the seat bottom again. Once again, stage 68. 
we're doing the back of the seat definitely has to be the easiest stage of any part work just doing this bit there you go that was stage 68 completed and then bring in stage 69 over once again I'm going to take this hard back for the cushion here manipulate all of these tabs on top then these PP screws for them to put in and then finally we're just taking this back section which goes on the top and pushes into place like that and that's the other seat cushions created so now we've made the seats we're going to be installing them so we actually need to make them seat like and to do that we've got these brackets here and we've got some belts here as well so i've got one of the seat cushions here doesn't matter which one you take but i do need to take uh, some hinges so i need the ones that are labeled l1 which is this one here this looks just like that these are actually metal just so you know and these are just going to be going into these holes that we can see here and here and i'm holding them in with silver qp screws so these look like this And I'll get these in. I do like how these chrome parts here are metal because you're going to need that reinforcement I'm guessing. Now I need the one that says R1 that's going to go on this side. Once again held in with those QP screws. Now I do have to do everything you see here on the other seat so what I'm going to do is create one and then cut when I do the second one okay so that's looking like that. Now I need one of the seat cushions looking like that and as you can see we've got these two holes just here. I want to make sure that the end of these fits into that lower hole just there. Now this time these are held in with an RP screw. That's one side in but I haven't put it in all the way just so I can line up this side as well. That's the second one going in here and now I can make that tight. So one and two. Perfect. So that's looking just like that and it's able to go forwards and backwards there. Now I've got the seat belt which is just going to go onto that vacant area just there. And that's held in once again with an RP screw. Holding my screwdriver like a pen to do this. There you go. Make sure that's in nice and straight. And then on the other side here we've got the actual catch that she's going to go into. So I've put the actual fold facing the inside and once again an RP screw to hold that into place. So again I'm lining it up, holding my screwdriver like a pen, get that started and get that all the way in. So as you can see we've got the belts in there and I do believe that we should be able to insert the belt into this side here. Now at the bottom of this I've got an adjustment lever I'm just going to push this into the two holes just here and when that's done it's going to look just like that. Now the second seat is exactly the same but we will put this on the other side. As you see at the bottom there we do have holes either side so let's do that. It's worth noting while I'm doing this second seat that the seat belts go the other way around as well. The catch this time will be on the opposite side and then that's that seat completed as well so that's both the seats done we're going to put these into the floor pan so i want to take the one that i created first and that's just going to go onto this section here i need these sp screws that are going into the two holes that you can see just here so get the first one in here and put the other one just in the back you don't want them in too tight, but you do want to have it so that these can move forwards and back just like that. Do the same on the other side. And there you go. With those in place, still able to move, that is all there is to do in that stage. Okay, in stage 71, as you can see here, quite a lot to do. Regarding carpets and stuff, we're going to be actually doing the uh, fuel tank cover. 
So we've got another massive section there and lots of carpet, including what looks like a jack and some little details there on a sticker. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is take this bit of carpet here, which is just going to go onto this center section here, exactly the same way as I've been doing it in the past, is I just line up the top section and I'll get this into place. I've actually managed to do that pretty much first time. Definitely first time. Okay. Then I've got this rectangular section here. This one I can take the whole thing off, which is going to go over this center arch. So that's in like that. This tiny section here, which is going to be going on the front. I think I'll match the back up first. There we go. That's that one on there. Excellent. Now it does say there might be an overlap, which there is slightly on this side here. So I'm just going to cut that section off so I've got a cleaner edge there do the same on the other side definitely need to get a job as a carpenter <laughs> okay that's done now I've got this rectangular panel here which will be going along this edge here perfect looking good and I've got this back panel here which is just going to be going on this side here and that's fitted on perfectly there so that is all carpeted up now in these areas just here this is what these stickers are for and they've gave you two just in case uh, you make a mistake so one's going into this top one like that and then we've got one going into the bottom one Just making sure these are the correct way around this is all of jacking instructions telling you how to jack the vehicle up now bringing over the panel this is actually going to go inside this section just here now if you have a look at the underside of this we have some pins this is the floor pan so it's just a case of lining up those pins and pushing them into place one two three four there we go that's in so that should hold itself as you can see all we got left to do then is just to assemble the jack so I've got a spring here which I need to put an LP screw through and if I have the hoop of this section upright the screw is going to go down the bottom like this as you can see now on this side here you can see a little pin at the top and what we need to do is put the spring through here might be best to put that in from the outside actually and then let me just take that screw back out then feed the spring into the inside and then put that screw back in so as you can see that looks like that and then down the bottom here you can see that I have got a hole for that screw to go in and screw that into place. So that's in like that. That wasn't the easiest thing to do. All I've got to do then is take the jack and the jack has just got some lugs on this side, some holes on this side. So it's just a push together thing. Make sure it's all clipped together like that. And then Using some tweezers, I can lift up this spring and slide this underneath. So as you can see, that's in. That's all there is to do in that stage. Which means even though there was 12 stages in this pack, they were quite quick because this is the last stage. And I'm gonna be building a firewall and clutch bell crank assembly. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have this bulkhead this way round and the wiper motor. This has got a locating lug at the top, which I'm just gonna put in here. And then I'm gonna be screwing this in on this side, just with FP screws. And it's gonna take two of these. Just 
one in this side as well. So that's the wiper motor in place. I've then got this voltage regulator to put in. Now this is a oh, key, keyhole pattern. So it can only go in one way. That's gonna go in here like that. This time that's held in with an EP screw, just into the holes here. Now I've got some shaped pins here, which are gonna be going into these hood buffers. Let's get these out. And you know what? I think I'm gonna glue these in. Now they do have a shaped D-shaped hole on this section here. You just know that this is the thing that I'm gonna lose, so that's why I'm gluing it in. And there you go, that's one in, do the same on the other side. So I've got the second one over here. And that's the second one in just there. So I'm gonna take this hood hinge. This one's gonna go in this side here with the buffer just on the top. And I'm screwing that in from this side with an FP screw. I am using my PH1 screwdriver there to get that in and do the same on the other side and get that last one there screwed in. So as you can see, they're both on like that. And now I want to take these two sections and ensuring that this end is coming off in a southeasterly direction if it's going towards me, this is going to go on the top just here. Once again, held in with an FP screw. So that's that in. And then the last thing I've got is this bracket here, looking like that little L-shaped bracket, which is just gonna go into the hole here. Once again, held in with an FP screw. And with that assembly complete, that's all there is to do in that stage. That's all there is to do in that pack. And there you go, that's what that bulkhead's looking like. So we've done that. We've obviously done this section here where I can now put the uh, mats in at the front here. I don't know how they go, but uh, Let's stick those in here and here. That'll be for the picture, but they're in as well. Absolutely loads we've done. <laughs> I really hope you liked that video. If you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please remember to subscribe. Other than that, take care.